All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance to Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here, of course, for Ruby, Ruby Volume 5. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter 9. Chapter 9. Mm -hmm. And yes. this one has a very uh, ominous, ominous thumbnail. thumbnail. <laughs> yes. Oh, Rooster yeah. Teeth, you're doing yeah. it again, aren't you? They do love Re to do that. Really, I, I think I figured out why they released these thumbnails early before the episode is actually out. They're yeah. trying to build up hype, and they're like, ooh, do you want a first subscription to exactly. see this all the time? Yeah. Very, very clever. Because this one, oh my gosh. Um, it's going to be good. We're getting the fight, guys. We Raven's are. Camp. We are indeed. Cinder versus Vernal and Raven versus with, 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 with Emerald, and Mercury. Emerald Mercury and Watts on their side yeah, as well. Yeah, what's Watts going to do? Like, I, I am very interested. I mean, we could go into speculation and stuff, but... but, but it's better to just watch yeah. it. So without further ado, let's get into this episode and uh, see how it all goes down. Oh. From her perspective first, yeah. Uh-huh. Sharpening, yeah. Raven, we have a problem. What is it? <laughs> yes. Salem's found us. <clears throat> oh. Salem. But now it's awfully okay. collected. Four of her followers are waiting to speak with you. Oh, right. they're not in a conversation. Okay. Yep. Bring me my helmet. Oh, they probably don't know who she is. Mm -hmm. What? She already opened up a portal in the room. <laughs> well, I don't recall inviting so many guests into our home. Either mm -hmm. I'm losing my memory, or you've all lost your spines. Don't be <laughs> too upset with them, Raven. <laughs> Your men simply recognize the power of a maiden when they see it. Oh. Which is why we'd like to have a word with you. Okay. Yeah. Leave us. Pack your things, then break down camp. We're moving. Okay. She's getting them out of the way. A little late to run and hide. You've been on our master's list for some time, so you <laughs> must understand that we cannot allow you to slip away. I know all about your master. <laughs> I don't believe we've met. We're the guys you should be afraid of. <laughs> I doubt anyone should be afraid of you. <laughs> oh, yeah? Tell that to quiet. <laughs> Just That's shut up, kid. That's what I thought. I'm Cinderfall. This is my associate, Arthur Watts. And my disciples, Emerald and Mercury. Disciples. Two children you've tricked into following you. A disgraced at least oh. scientist and a fall maiden with a surname so appropriate she probably <laughs> picked it herself. <laughs> yes! Everything tells me you've got more than a slight case of egomania. <laughs> we know where Yang got the wit, wit from. Yep. <clears throat> uh, technically, I was also a doctor, but I must say the rest was spot on. Yep. Aren't you perceptive? That's what's <laughs> kept me alive. I'm afraid the only reason you're still alive is because you have something our master wants. Of course, if I'm wrong. Vernal! Oh. Um, oh. showing your hand much, Raven? Yeah. So. This is the long lost spring maiden. <laughs> Prove it. Uh, uh, <sighs> the problem is, is that now that they know that she's the spring maiden, Emerald could already be working her illusions. Yeah, but for now. I think Raven's confidence is a good sign. Hopefully. Cinder's not uh, perturbed at all. She's nope. just like, this power. Uh-huh. Oh, and it's a remix of the... Yeah. Or different rendition of the, the Fall Maiden fight. Yep. Vernal has done well under my guidance. I'd take that into consideration before you try anything. <laughs> Raven, I won't underestimate you, so please don't insult my intelligence. <laughs> there is a slim chance you and your maiden could escape here today. But if you know our master as well as you claim to, then you know you could never truly escape her. <laughs> but we come bearing an olive branch. 
Oh, the okay. The are merely a means to an end. Salem's true desires are the relics locked within the Huntsman Academies. Come with us. Allow Vernal here to unlock the Relic of Knowledge, and all previous acts of defiance against Salem will be forgiven. Mm. Raven's not that stupid. Either of you are going to get. You talk as if walking straight into Haven will be easy. That's because it will be. Headmaster Lionheart is loyal to Salem now. All we need is the key to the vault. Mm. She's... You're not the only one to turn your back on Oz, Raven. I'm not helping Salem. I'm not helping Oz. I don't want a part in any of this. That ship sailed when you chose to harbor a maiden. Yeah. yeah. But if you come with us to Haven, we'll leave you, your tribe, and your little secret to live out the rest of your days squabbling in the wilderness. Whoa. We just need the relic. I need time to think this over. You don't have time. In two days, Haven Academy will be destroyed by the Whoa. White Fang. You're Whoa. going to choose now. Okay. You me into a corner, huh? So, <laughs> are you with us or against us? Yeah. Oh no! Agreements like these are built on trust. And forgive me for saying, but I don't trust a single one of you. You're going to need to give me more. You are in a poor position to negotiate. I want my brother dead. Whoa. Crow? That's okay. Me. He knows I have spring. And if I help you get your relic, he's going to become a problem. <laughs> I have enough problems to deal with. Jeez. Crow doesn't trust okay. Me but he does trust Ospin's other lieutenants. If Leo really is loyal to you, then you can order him to invite Crow right into an ambush. He arrives yeah. at Haven, we take him down, you get your relic, and we all leave happy. Wow. Okay. Now this is a proposition I can get behind. All right, ladies, let's pause for a moment. We have one objective, retrieving the relic of knowledge. Now, Crow Bronwyn may be on our list of individuals we would very much like dead. <laughs> he's not going to go down without a fight, and he's not going to fight quietly. Our advantage here is just as you said. We walk straight into Haven. No resistance, no one the wiser. A battle with your brother throws that all out the window. Yeah. He's good, but not that good. All of us against him? It'll be over in a heartbeat. Whoa. But it's not just him. He has the students with him. He has Ruby. He certainly does. If we <laughs> the bloody mess, it will draw the attention of the authority. <laughs> the kingdom will be on high alert, and the White Fang's attack will be ruined. Then we wait. We wait until the full moon. Leo invites Crow and his little fighters to Haven the same night Hazel and Adam arrive with the White Fang. Whoa. As soon as the battle is won, the White Fang demolishes Haven and any evidence we may have left behind is lost along with the school. Then Salem leaves my people alone. For good. You have yourself a deal. Whoa! Holy! Oh, what? You over Don't think I don't see what you're after. If this mm -hmm. falls to pieces over your grudge with a child, I will not be taking the blame. Then what are you worried about? <sighs> <laughs> Go back home and tinker with your machines. And tell Salem she'll get what she wants. <laughs> and more. Oh boy. Yeah, the oh poster boy. was trying to tell us. The poster was trying to tell us. Oh, Menagerie. Here it goes. This oh. is where he dies. <laughs> <laughs> but why isn't he using weapons? Like, speed. No, I know, speed. but sure. Aura as well is an actual thing. Oh, oh, geez, he's alive. Oh, okay, his, his aura, aura broke. Is, yeah, yeah, it's either broken or it's just shimmering a little bit. Ooh. What the? Ooh. Oh, there nice. we go. Here we go.
Looks like Sokka. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Attacking the weak link. Oh. Nice! nice. Yes! Actual use of didn't semblance. I'm not they sure. could have killed them right there. Right away. But, okay. Take down Corsic and Finnick. No, go now. But you keep assuring me your friend isn't a complete waste of space. Let's see him prove it. We got this, Blake. <laughs> I wanted to sock these creeps since the day we met. Uh, really? Don't divide the forces if you don't have to. Blake, go. Maybe take a swipe at them as you go. I I won't let you down, sir. Shut up. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes, for now. I followed them as you asked. Did they mm. spot you? <laughs> of course not. Uh. They have a ship two clicks west of here. Looks like they're staying there for the night. That could be Emerald. Oh. <gasps> Thank you, Bernal. They're gonna ambush them? Anything else? Do you actually believe they'll let us go once they have the relic? Of course not. <laughs> they'll never leave us alone. Once our purpose has come and gone, we'll be discarded. Salem only uses people until they are no longer useful. Oh, if bring up Cinder again. If we have any chance mm -hmm. of defending ourselves against her, then we need this relic. Whoa. Holy crap. If Crow and those brats want to follow Ozpin, then let them. When the chaos reaches its peak, we'll grab the relic and make our escape. Oh, I and love this. Yeah. Will be a part of all that. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I warned her. She made her choice. Hmm. This path won't be easy for us either. But we must do what's right for the tribe. Okay. I know. I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> oh. Good. <laughs> all right. I love this. Third okay. faction stuff yeah. is always yep. the best. It yep. is. Mm -hmm. Emerald. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh no, it's just Raven. Okay. No, but. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ah, Raven's going to spy on, uh... No, she's gonna give him a message. Hey, oh. Crow? Maybe not. Oz needs to talk to you. <laughs> oh, if that is Raven, this could be very bad. Yes. Yes, this could be very bad. But they're going into another room, so they should be fine. Oh. So is she gonna help fight with Kali, or? She, yeah, she's gonna help protect her mom. Yeah. Oh. This okay. <laughs> does need to happen. Yep. Yep. Alright. Here it goes. Oh, they're teasing us again, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I could tell. I was like, all right, all right. Okay, okay. All right. I, I want to say, I'm, I'm totally saying I called it. Like, the conversation between them was important. Yes. But I totally wasn't right about the fight. Yeah. yeah. That, None of us were. <laughs> yeah. So, so there was no fight. No. And I think that is a clever sleight of hand by the writers to say, okay, we mm -hmm. get it. Doing a fight with these six would, would be exceptionally awesome. hard well, to oh, actually sure. pull yeah. off. Right. So what we're going to do is tease an even better fight yeah. coming in the future, which is the fight we really all wanted to see. Exactly. This one would have been fantastic, but, but because we know how Raven's motivations conflict with Salem's yes. and Crow and mm -hmm. the crew, they're, um, they're it, gonna, it makes it very exciting. Yeah, they're really shaping this up to be the next um, fall of beacon. Fall of beacon, because yeah. they're like they're letting us know that they're putting so many chips on the table here. Like, there's not only a lot of chips on the table; there's a lot of conflicting directions things are going to yes. go to where yes. not everyone is going to get what they want. 
the idea, right. the idea of Raven kind of kind of in a way being a little bit too forthcoming with them, saying like, "Well, I'll leave happy." Cinder's not stupid either. Right. She knows that Raven's going to you know try and do something. Yeah, and I am I'm a little bit worried because. We didn't see anything about Emerald, like, right. pulling some kind of trick here, so, which would have been just perfect. That, also, yeah. it would have been insanely tough if they were being followed to have Emerald do an illusion there and then basically, like, follow oh. over and all back. But she could have. Um, or and that's what we expected or something like that. Or that... Um, what I thought it was going to be, and, and thinking it back on it, it, this wouldn't have made sense, is that basically they noticed that Vernal was following them and captured Vernal. Oh. Oh. Like, and, that they, and that they basically had that fight be off screen. Emerald then goes back. Yeah, no, the that, illusions. That would, be, that would be great as a twist. But, yeah. But that, they that had to do that twist in this episode. Exactly. Uh, right. They wouldn't do that in the next episode. Yeah. And plus, if they got Vernal, why would they need Raven anyways? Yeah, exactly. Um, also, I think one of the points they're trying to bring up is that they could kill Vernal or steal the power in some way, but they get a lot more out of it by good, getting to the relic. So, what what's... What's being told here, which is really clever, is Salem doesn't need to have the four maiden powers to have her goal. There's a right. there's a very straightly defined power structure being put in place here. Yeah, the yeah the, the fact- maidens are powerful, but the relics are up here. Exactly. She needs the you know the maidens to get access to the relics, but once she has right. one relic, for instance, she doesn't really care. She doesn't have yeah. the maiden it corresponds to because the relic is infinitely strong exactly yeah because we don't know what it does right but but the relic because we don't knowledge, know it, like that probably will help them at the very least know where all the other maidens and relics are yeah i'm actually worried about having some kind of a plot device that strong right without really any parameters yet yeah. Because we know it's stronger than a maiden. At least it's more valuable to Salem than a maiden. Exactly. But we don't know what the parameters of the god rocks are, you know. It's 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 a little yeah. bit it's a little bit iffy yeah. and I'm 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 almost hoping they don't go so in depth into them because they're these ancient mysterious exactly. yes. They they should yeah. remain these unknowns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That they have things that can be done, but maybe even the villains like Salem don't need quite to discover them. what their capacity is. And that could actually be a really cool way to give Salem some like screen time mm-hmm. development. Yeah, is she's like, okay, I have a relic. I have a relic, and now how I do actually, I use it? <laughs> how do I use it? Like the yeah. idea that she could finally have something that would actually be challenging for her, right? Without it being a fight, because it also removes a lot so of often. exposition potentially because then they show what it sure. can do rather than have crow sit everyone around a campfire and tell everyone what it does. <laughs> exactly. Um. I, I think though that the the really interesting thing this episode because I feel like this episode didn't close any plot lines that were open except for the Raven's camp encounter. Right. The other stuff felt like a continuation yeah. without re- any real substance which to it, which is, is okay. It's okay because, like, the 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 more I'm watching this volume, it's making me think, like, oh, I see the, the kind of style they're wanting to go for. Right. The Everything that's happening with, say, Raven's tribe and that right. whole confrontation wasn't supposed to be a separate thing from the Battle for Haven. Yeah. Everything for this volume is the Battle, is the for, battle Haven. for Haven. Yeah. It's all building up to that. Exactly. Um. And the stuff that happens prior to that are basically chess moves that need right. to be made before yep. you check the king and then checkmate the king, you know. Right. So this game that's being played is an actual game and I would almost mm-hmm. commend the uh, Ruby writers for finally going towards this style because I feel like in volumes two and three when they were setting up the chess pieces moving for the battle for Beacon, oh. what it was was there was a lot of things happening off screen and a lot of things that were not clearly defined to being a game that's chess pieces because it was 
a surprise, which right. is which is great. Yeah, but since the main characters actually know that the attack is going to be happening now, right. they're showing the machinations in real time as opposed to just being like, you know that Cinder is doing shady Something. stuff, and then all of a sudden, bam, everything goes to pot. Right, because this is more ambitious. You actually have to portray right. all the pieces moving in a specific yeah. way. And then have, like, the one big piece looming in the background, the queen, Salem, mm -hmm. who's probably doing stuff. But it's kind of nice that we don't get to see what she's doing while we get to see what everyone right. else is doing. So that when the attack for Haven does happen, if suddenly some kind of subterranean grim thing, like, shakes the foundations of Haven yeah, itself that, that. after the White Fang have left or something, then it's... It's like, oh, oh okay, now right. that's 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 a crazy good twist. But we have all these other moving parts to where we can see how uh, future conflicts will stem from these movements. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, um, having everything depend on this final battle is a lot ballsier because yes. it's putting all your eggs in one basket. However, one of the mm -hmm. things that they're doing amazingly is by having there being multiple factions involved mm -hmm. in this battle yeah a lot of them trying to like all trying do to do their own thing each other yep that means that the number of possibilities for how this could go <laughs> just just skyrockets yes yeah, just goes right. through the roof you have the white fang you have team ruby and Juni junior you know right you, you have, have crow, crow and, and oscar, oscar. You have, have Lionheart and the yes. Haven people themselves. Mm -hmm. You have and Salem's uh, crew, crew essentially, right? And then you have you uh, have the the uh, Raven and her tribe. Raven and her tribe with yes. Vernal. With and, Vernal. And even then, you have little things like oh, the 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 uh, the conflict that they've kind of established between Hazel and Adam, mm -hmm. or the the conflict the rivalry between, between Cinder Watts and, and Watts. Cinder. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's. There's it, just so many things that could happen. Is there so many things that could happen? And I feel like what that does is it it sets up the expectations to be something where we will be surprised. And I right. feel like I feel like one of the things that Ruby isn't necessarily the best at in some areas is the predictability of its plot. There were the parts at the end of volume 3 that were unpredictable. Yeah. But in general the flow and the structure of the plot makes that's kind of true. a it kind of has a very predictable motion and I, I think that's good because what's not predictable is the next weapon we're gonna see the next right. semblance we're gonna see yeah. the next crazy plan that salem or ozpin are gonna hatch on each other yes. the developments of the lore and the backstories of key characters those things are unexpected but the right. plot follows a nice Yes. consistent progression good versus evil epic battle for the fate of the world right but yeah. i think that's a good thing to develop is continue the simple high execution simple concept right. ratio yeah and by doing that this way i think you avoid any kind of volume four issues you basically keep sure the i mean i would say volume four had actually a more complex concept oh yeah because they they had they had split uh mm -hmm. split stories yeah but that means the execution was more difficult so therefore it, it right. faltered a little bit but with volume five the concept has now yeah. basically become let's draw everything in the story towards, towards Haven. this place oh and that's a good point there's another p party involved blake and son and any of the faunus that they can might be able true. to from menagerie to help yeah so, yeah, this is this is crazy. This is almost like the feeling of uh, certain times in Game of Thrones where you have basically everyone moving towards King's Landing, for instance, okay. and for for some grand you know final battle or something like that. Um, there's a couple other stories I can think of as well where you have a place of importance that is kind of made important by some kind of plot device, mm -hmm. sure. And that's a little bit, you know, contrived, but that's that's fine. This is fantasy. <laughs> we need plot devices. Exactly. You know, yeah. they have their place. And having all these characters' motivations actually being the thing that creates the conflicts, instead of actually revolving it right. specifically around the plot device, they they kind of brought it up in this episode by having Raven be the one that's like, yes. no, to ensure our survival, we need the plot device. Right. Kind of shows that she's going to fail. Because, well, I... No, 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 no. Think, think about this for a second. Mm -hmm. The the reason why she's going to fail is because of who Salem is. 
she could get the relic. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. But then what is she going to do? It's kind of the it's kind of the short-sightedness of Raven in that she definitely knows what to do in the given moment. She's she's going to kick off the hornet's nest because she believes mm-hmm. she can get something that will help help her avoid the hornets basically. right yeah exactly <laughs> so so it's and her, she's playing with fire and i think this is in line with raven's personality yeah. Uh, well yeah and, and i mean considering and and here's the thing because she has her portals yes she can she can do this because she actually as long can. as she has a portal to someone that's exactly unless she's bringing this whole problem back to taiyang that, oh if, shoot! Yeah. Imagine if she was telling Hatch the truth. Nuked, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine if she's telling the truth. Okay, Raven succeeds. She gets the relic and portals to Taiyang, and she's like, "I'm sorry." And he's like, "What did you do?" And then suddenly, Whoa. jumping through the portal is Cinder, right? And like, I don't know, someone okay. else. And uh, then it's a maiden uh against cinder and all her fury mm-hmm. and maybe salem as well or something i think that would be the ultimate twist is that salem herself shows up once the haven haven is destroyed for okay. the relic kind of give it to me and uh sure because well yeah because okay here's the thing i get the feeling uh salem trusts watts way more than cinder oh i actually oh i I want you to talk about like, why you think that, well, but I, I'm well, because, not sure about or, that. Or uh, I think Salem would trust Watts with the relic may, way more than she would trust Cinder with the relic. Because she, I don't think she would oh, want Cinder to be a maiden sure. and have the relic of knowledge. I think she could I, she could okay. see that as being like, okay, now you're starting to get too, too powerful. Okay. Um, I, I have a problem with the idea that someone having the relic means they can instantly wield it. So I don't think that they, I don't think they that have to Raven, attune to legendary magic item. Right. I don't think Raven is thinking about this as as carefully as she could be because she doesn't know if immediately having the relic means knowledge. Okay. Means that they're gonna have any immediate boon sure. from it. It could be a thing where you go, Great. Now what? Right. Like it's an infinity yeah. stone that you can't actually control because you're not a you celestial. You cannot it. None of us can. You know. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, and and it's the idea of, yeah, the, like the one ring, Boromir is not going to be able to call upon the power of it. Yeah. It's going to maybe make him feel powerful, but right. no, it's going to be his undoing. And yeah. I, I feel like they they taunted us with the idea of crow death flags and then everyone's but, like, but but they have the main characters. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, Emerald gets it. They have plot covering their themselves. And she's like, um, I, I see a problem here. I'm really good, but yeah. But 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 for like, them, they think, ah, the girl with the silver eyes, well, yes. And it makes sense that Emerald would comment on that specifically because she's like, okay, if it was just Crow, then yeah, we'd kick his ass, right? Right, right, but, right. But, but she's like, I've seen them fight. Like, well, well, not only Ruby I've alone seen, is kind of scary. Well, well, not just that she's seen them fight, but that her own usefulness sort just, of crashes just, just, into the just ground. Just crumbles into nothing. Right. She's like, I, I can get Crow, but it's no problem. But if there's like six other people there, that's... Right. I can't do that. Like, <laughs> yeah, my my uh, my effectiveness is uh, like I can lock out Crow for the fight. Oh, actually, think about it. What? That's a really good idea. Like as a as a as far as a writing setup, mm-hmm. imagine this: you have the ambush, yeah. right? Crow maybe is a little bit wary, and he doesn't bring Oscar with them. Okay. Okay. But he goes with. You know some of the other uh, students uh-huh. and stuff. Yeah, and maybe someone right, else. Because Lionheart stays doesn't with know about uh, Lionheart doesn't know about, about Oscar. Yeah. yeah, so he's so. the secret weapon. But they go Emerald Hermesis's Crow. Crow. Okay. But then it becomes a game of protect Crow. Well, at the same. That's time, actually a very cool fight dynamic. That, well, like, and that's what they did. That's kind of what they did in the Nuclevi fight uh-huh, too. Yep. The, doing it like, like this would be way crazier. Yeah. One of the other things that would make it really interesting is that, and and they might not do this just because there's too many pieces and they're not focusing on Crow's sure. semblance anymore. Mm-hmm. But Crow's semblance of bad luck. If you're having something where there's like twelve people there. A lot of things. Oh, oh no! Very wrong. Oh no! <laughs> like, I, I really, I, I really feel like uh, we 
we need to think about uh, characters that are starting to get trickles of development. And, and see who has the death flags. See who has the death flags. And I think Raven, Raven has the biggest one so yeah, far. Yeah. But they're basically exchanging Crow for Raven from Volume 4. So, right. So the real question is, are they juking us on like both of them and basically saying, no, 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 it has nothing to do with Crow or Raven. The Stark, um, you know team uh-huh. needs to get back together at some point so that they can just and and the way the they can do that and here's the way they could do that they mm-hmm. have raven get the relic and then yep. go back to tyang and yep. and okay here's one of the things so one of the big questions that i've had throughout yep. ruby uh-huh. is why is tyang still sitting in patch why is he letting his kids go um, off and do the dangerous stuff and not doing anything himself when he's probably better than i, I think i think that's um that's looking. a little bit of inferred stuff. You don't know that he's doing nothing. Okay, sure. Since Yang left, you have no idea what he's doing. That's true. And I feel that like is, that I is feel true. like we need to we need to remember just as much as you were upset that we haven't seen Neo or Port that <laughs> much. They are not relevant to this plot. Oh no, I know. So they're not right. going to be but, even but, a focus. But really. if they're wanting to develop Team Stark, they've they developed. They Crow. already have. They're developing right. Raven. Right. They're developing Raven. Taiyang is essentially the the last one if they want to have Summer. Yes. Yeah, but, yeah. But she's dead. <laughs> yes, so they develop her right. by talking about her. But, and one of the ways that they could do that is mm-hmm. if Raven went to Taiyang. Oh no, I I think that's 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 a way that they could do it. But you know But it's that, going to be Ozpin talking to Ruby. I mean, okay. come on. Okay. We need sure. to learn about Silver yeah. Eyes. Yeah. We need to know why Summer was Ozpin's kind of champion. Sure. We need to know Other what. Other than the fact that she was Silver Eyes. And yes, but the yeah. point is, is that Ozker mm-hmm. provides this really great opportunity for Ozpin to tell us some really good bits of info, right. and potentially, potentially, kind of, potentially, kind of show us. A little bit yeah. as well. Here's okay. Here's the thing that I'm wondering. Mm-hmm. Ozpin doesn't like to tell his secrets. Now he's okay. he's been he's been a lot more forthcoming with the with the main characters, you know, recently, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But what I'm wondering is what is going to be the impetus or whatever that basically makes Ozpin realize, okay, I need to finally, like, tell Ruby about her mom and the silver eyes and all that stuff. Crow dying could do it. Um... I, I feel like the main thing that it's going to be is an actual use for her silver eyes. And I feel like sure. if this volume is about getting stronger, before the end of the volume, Ruby will silver use eyes, again. well, yeah, either that or she'll um, be told something about it. Sure. Yeah, it, I, it won't okay. necessarily be something great, but she's either going to use it again or they're or going to at least bring it back they're up. They're going to at least bring it back up. Yeah, okay. All and right. I feel like they don't need to do much more than that, but I feel like because they've held back on finally coming full circle and explaining the whole Team Stark dynamic, they've kind of got a little bit of plot armor around Crow. But I would yeah. love for them to buck convention and just kill off, like... Crow. Crow and Raven. Like, like imagine, like, <laughs> the sister and the brother oh. go out just oh, together in that, a very tragic that would kind be, of turn of events. That would yeah. be awesome. Also, I wonder if the reason um, behind kind of Crow's uh, bad luck thing mm-hmm. will get a little bit of context maybe once uh, Raven gets there because we know that Raven seemed to be the kind of the canceling effect for it just kind of a being near him yeah uh, that, that was where we speculated that a was, long time that was ago mostly that it was speculation it's mostly speculation what, uh, Raven's semblance was yeah um, yeah I mean but, we knew she could do the portal so we right. we we were pretty sure that was her semblance it wasn't almost, her sword creating portals right, right. but I'm going seemed... to tear through space time <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It almost seemed like, like for me at least, it almost seemed too crazy to be just a semblance. Like, like that was just right. like, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Like, I, I don't know what that is, but that that's something. Well, right. But we we knew it had to be her power, and not yeah. like she was using gravity or gravity dust. Yeah, in yeah. Combination with <laughs> she just sword. had a, a ton of it in her sword at that point, and just used it all 
to agree. Can you imagine, guys, if Gravity Dust was the original explanation? <laughs> that would and just, no. Miles and Carrie, I mean, I'm not trying to deface Monty at all, but I think Monty wanted way more application of dust in he general. He probably did. And they maybe looked at Raven, they're like, wait, she uses Gravity Dust to make portals? They're like, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> right, because otherwise it'd be like, that, that would be happening a whole lot more. And Yang probably would have recognized that as being what it was. Yeah, um, I, I don't anyways, think that was the case. Anyways, but anyways but, for yeah. this volume, yeah. we have Adam going to Haven. They gave us a time limit I think it's going to be in two days. I think Haven... Oh, yeah, see, I think but Adam is the rendezvous point from which they will strike. Right. But Adam isn't moving as far as we know right now. Sure. He's probably waiting for the combined forces from Menagerie to come yeah. and join him. Because what I was kind of hoping is that Adam, like, like okay, things would be going kind of well with the whole battle that was going there. And it's like, no, right. we're actually going to save everybody. And then Adam basically comes in like a Darth Vader wannabe right. and just starts killing everybody. Kylo Adam. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but on, on, on that thing, you were talking about the deadline. Yeah. We now have a two-day mark from where they planned past tense to attack Haven. Right. And they but said that they were of, going to do everything at the same time. At no, least that's the current he, plan. Yes, yes, yes. But the point is is that there might be some communication sent to Adam about how they're going to do the whole ambush. Okay. You know, before this. So, sure. So... You know, clarify with me if I'm wrong, like, or contradict me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. um, how is the whole situation with Crow going to go down? They seem to have... The, I think the idea is that they're, they're going to have set. Lionheart lure them away, right? lure them into an ambush right before the battle. So right. even if they're able to, like, send messengers out, they might either get killed, yeah. or it just won't be enough because they won't be able to contact anybody in time to bring reinforcements. Um, gotcha. Because, okay, that makes sense. Because currently the school hasn't started up yet, so it's it's largely empty. Right. Um, now the okay. question is, is what is Lionheart going to do? Because I don't doubt that they will be able to coerce him right. into doing what they want. But whenever you set up a character like that, especially considering that one, it's one that Ozpin trusted so much, and two, the fact that they are already suspicious of yep. Lionheart because yep. he has neglected some of Ozpin's yep. direct orders. And Ozker said, like, hey, Crow, yeah. Ozpin needs to talk to you. Right. And we don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, they're, they're not going to blindly walk into the trap. And, right. And we might also be getting an arc for Lionheart where he basically ends up going against Salem and all them and probably at that point dying. Yes, that's a good point. Of all the people actually that have the biggest death flags right now, Lionheart's is just is really high, especially because of Raven's little line here uh -huh. about yep. once Salem they and their usefulness. Yeah, they, they're discarded. And, and once Haven's captured, why do they need Lionheart? You know? Well, why do they need Haven? Well, it, yeah, exactly. Haven right. would just then be another sacrifice on the altar of Remnant, basically, for... Right. Salem's terrifying the populace terrifying and, the populace yeah. and shaking up the world structure and peace and all that yep and potentially finding a way to uh segregate the final two remaining nations from ever having any kind of alliance with each That's other true because i'm thinking about this tactic sorry strategically mm -hmm. and atlas and vacuo seem to be the most opposite yeah. of nations yep of the four of them. Right. And having the two of them be the only surviving, basically, places left uh -huh. with, you know, with their relics and their... We're going to get Dictator stuff. Ironwood, and it is going to be amazing. It's going to be terrifying. It's yeah. going to be awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> uh, but those are, those are plot lines coming in Volume 6, obviously. Yes. Uh, but this episode in particular, I feel like it lends itself to a more theory-based kind of discussion because... Yeah. The actual content at Menagerie was pretty, pretty lackluster. It's more mm -hmm. build up. Yeah. Um, I wanted to make a point of showing that uh, Gira is an accomplished fighter, but it seems to be that the way Aura works now, one solid hit is either enough to right. dissipate Aura or at the very least to damage it a lot. Because or, yeah. 
they're showing a lot of stuff happen off screen, mm-hmm. but from what we know thus far yeah. with Aura, whenever the Aura just flicks a color, it's, it's gone. No, 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 no. Just a color just comes up. That's when you just activated the Aura because it got it, oh, you know, yeah. hit something. Mm-hmm. But when it cracks and it kind of goes... Yeah. That's when the aura is broken, right? Which means that they're now vulnerable to, yes. you know, regular attacks and, and stuff. And I get that the episodes of Ruby are very short, considering the amount of stuff that they actually have to cover. Exactly. So it makes sense that they would like sort of go very quickly to this person's aura is broken, so you need to be worried about them. Right. But it is one of those things where it's like, okay, I wouldn't. Expect- aura received a huge nerf recently. Aura received a huge nerf nerf recently, and especially in the case of the Faunus, maybe it's something that only the members of the White Fang actually like have a habit of carrying weapons. Sure. But I was really shocked that Gira didn't have some awesome weapon, and and Kali too, because even if they're not um, not like militant in how they or even their lives, or even like they're not even really huntsmen and huntresses. Right, they're not even really huntsmen and huntresses. They're still very much leaders. So right, it feels, I mean, if their guards little, had weapons, it would make sense that they would have weapons. But they have guards. That's a thing to bring up. Jacob. That's true. They That's have true. actual guards, and you don't see Ozpin having a guard ever. <laughs> That's my point. Is that yeah? You, when but you Ozpin's think of like a god. No, no, no. no. I, I get you. I get you. But the idea of having yeah. leaders specifically. Yes. You know, having people that are guards means that they are relying on them for security in some ways. Yeah. It's not like the dumb video game setup where right. the guards are basically peons compared to well, the strength of the video game boss. Well, okay. No, in this episode, it kind of established that these guards, even while they could fight against the other White, White Fang members, as soon as basically people with unique character designs came in, they were done for. The, so, no, the, the guy who... Um, who was at the trial and he was like get her that one he's like the captain of their guards mm-hmm. i'm seeing i'm trying to remember his name from like the credits or something like that but yeah and i think he, he's still around he's but, still around but like the but you know gira and and kali were very much like picking up the weapons of their of their fallen right. guards but um, but jacob people are gonna die when well no no and I, I i i get that people are going to die it's just one of those things where it almost seems too easy for the white fang to be doing this and that they didn't really need to like they like they they could have killed them anytime they wanted without very much effort. It didn't need to be an attack. I don't think in the they're worried about the. I don't think they're worried about the effort. I think they were worried about the repercussions of letting them live. And until right. this point, they, they didn't actually have an actual reason they didn't, to kill them. No, no, no. They didn't have a an, an urgent reason. They had plenty sure. of reason to, but they were worried about the repercussions of doing it without any. Yeah, agency. especially yeah. Okay, before Sienna Khan was killed. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. So um, it's now basically a very methodical step by step of dismantling right. the current White Fang associated leadership. Mm-hmm. And then that way, Adam has no threats yeah. back home. It's kind if of the anything, idea of when you're conquering um, other nations and stuff in, in wars and stuff, you see this all the time. The dictator, bad guy, basically. They'll start by conquering their own people. Right. And they'll remove any yeah. threats at the homeland, and, and then, then they'll, they'll go out. Yeah. So, yes, absolutely. so this is just an example of that. Right. Uh, it was just one of those things where I'm like, I don't think, other than Whitley and Jacques, and of course mm-hmm. it makes sense for them to not be able to fight, um, but other than them, I don't think we'd really seen characters that were very much like awesome character designs, main characters that weren't actually like... That's Very. because we were at the school the whole time, Jacob. That's and true. One of the That's things true. that we need to remember is that not everyone is a huntsman and huntress. Yeah, I just really... Not everyone has the uh, capacity to make their own weapon. Not everyone has the technology to make their own weapon. Shoot. When you think about all the weapons that Team Ruby has, what they basically did by opening the world up was show how special and unique yes. those kinds of right. weapons and right. characters are. Yes, but because we haven't like but because we haven't seen uh, very up close the people that don't have those things right. it's easy to take those things for granted and be like why sure. doesn't everyone have some weapon that's also a gun so like seeing mm-hmm. like Kali not actually have a weapon, weapon of her own that was very that was very shocking to me like and and I wanted to see her go all eight blades <laughs> goddess of death in war you know or yeah uh, <laughs> I feel like 
we're a little bit underestimating Gira in that he is kind of a weapon. Yes, but but, but his here's aura the, broke with one hit. So well, like okay, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think because he's no longer a, web, a member of the White Fang, mm -hmm. you could almost say that he might have put away that side of himself to where Probably. he, you know, he's focused on being just a good chief to the people of Menagerie, well, and, and he doesn't need a weapon. And he was also before Sienna Khan, I believe, so that would have meant that he, when he was around, they probably didn't carry weapons as a regular thing. No, they probably carried some, but yeah, but not but like... Not like, okay, let's be ready to like, you know, go to war. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's one of the ideas of where, when you think about kind of the massive cultural changes that have happened throughout history mm -hmm. as a form of protesting. There were many, many peaceful protests that ended up do, doing very incredible things. And a lot of times there were protests that were, people would try to delegitimize because they would carry weapons or sure. some kind of, any kind of thing that could be considered some kind of aggressive yeah. weapon and such. And maybe that's a little bit of Gira's character in that you know, everyone has the choice of whether or not to be a violent person. Sure. But you don't need to, especially as a fawn, it's in the, having the advantages of having claws and things like that. Right. He doesn't need to carry something yes. like that That's with true. him to further emphasize no. the strength right. of his resolve I, it's to just, get their it's goals just something, done. It, it seems like one of those opportunities to have two more like cool awesome weapons introduced so right. it, it just felt like there, there was a little part in my heart that felt yeah. like something was missing. Yeah. But, on yeah. on the other hand, though, what they are giving the opportunity for mm -hmm. Sun to do here yes. is Sun is now going to prove himself. That's right. I think this is the final thing he'll need to do, and Gira will be totally cool with him. Yeah. Because Assuming Gira Sun, lives. No, yes, I, I, I know, Jacob. Yeah. But Sun has skills. Yeah, he is a badass. One of the things we easily forget like when we think about sun we're like uh sun but sun is a really good fighter yeah. like we f we forget like, we that forget gun that chuck introduction gun chuck introduction like yeah. whenever you want to show someone ruby just and you want to that. show them like 15 seconds and have them instantly be on board yeah just show them gun chucks yeah gun chucks that's mm -hmm. all you need to do yep. so sun having an opportunity to prove himself yes will be good for I would say not only him, it's good for Gira because that means right. Gira's relatively safe. Yeah, the problem exactly. I have is that Kali's going to get captured and they'll do the whole, yeah, yeah come to our side or she gets it kind yeah. of thing. And, and it'll be like, right. oh, I hope I hope that crap. doesn't happen. And now that, now that one, Sun is on, uh, fighting alongside Gira yeah. and they specifically told Blake to leave when I don't believe they had any good reason of doing so. No, Kali. Well, oh, yes. They, well, yes. Come on, Jacob. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it what it really was was yes, Kali is a good enough reason, but it was their way to have this awesome one on one confrontation with Ilya. Uh, which yes, exactly. Which Blake will win. Yes, Blake will win. Blake will win. She yeah. will kill Ilya, but Right. But, uh, uh, but, unless it becomes something other than a one on one, Blake will win. Right. But because they made it so possible for like they literally set everything up in this episode for Gira to, to die. die. Yeah. I hope he doesn't because that would because they basically prepped us so much for it, right. it would make it feel less emotional in my mind, especially if Blake's not there. Yeah, because but that's why I'm actually more worried for Kali now. Right, which is another thing that is... I wanted is, to see Unlimited Blade Sun, Works. Like, yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> but Sun, Sun being there, I think, covers Gira for at least one more episode. Yeah. If something dramatic changes in the next episode, then Gear might die in the next one. But I or, think I'll predict mm -hmm. Gear will not die the next episode. Here's he one not way they, the next episode. Here's one way they could do it, though. Okay, they have Sun basically have uh, Corsic and Fennec target Sun basically, and okay. Gira ends up dying to save Sun. Oh, oh, and God. and, and no, I hope look that at their happen. puny weapons. No. Sun is going to send them like. I, I hope so. No, I certainly he's, hope so. He is going to crush yeah. them. Yeah. It is going to be hilarious how yeah. bad we find out oh, that I know, they are I know. with those, those little dinky, those, yeah, like, it's... trident things, you know. Right. They're, like, dust-imbued. Yeah. Like, but, but yeah, you know. so in this in this matchup, 
Sun should win. Like, Sun should win. Sun because should he has Gira bonus. on his side, so that's just an added bonus. And he he can do it. But he <laughs> is well accomplished in group fights. Yes. One of the things that I think we uh, one of the things I think we've missed seeing a lot is the one character against impossible odds fights. Oh yeah. And we haven't been doing those for a long time. We've been doing a lot of group fights, which are admittedly yep. harder to do. Mm-hmm. But we've also been doing a lot of one on ones, and it's kind of obvious that we've been kind of switching to that. Right. Well and even before, usually when they would do like impossible odds, it was usually just like one, one person character beating down on a beating, bunch of people. Beating down on a bunch Pira of people. Kira against Team Cardinal. Right. Or all the times that, like, Weiss... Like, in, in Season 2, when they were on the sure. train. Or mm-hmm. or Weiss and Blake, when they were literally just blitzing right. there was There was no time. tension as to, exactly. as to that they it's would It's just win. like, let's show these people being awesome. Because they are awesome. Which, I, I, I am glad that we have tension now in fights. Uh, yep. Volume 3 had a bunch of that. But that was mostly a few specific fights that were just immediately going wrong. Right. And the tension was that there wasn't actually a fight. It was a beat down from the villains to the good guys. Yes. And that is scary, but now we have more even fights. Exactly, because they they know the fights are coming and stuff. So I mm-hmm. I I am very excited to see more of that sort of not that they take away the tension, but that they still have that rule of cool where you realize yes. these main characters they're not nobodies. They they have been working yeah. very hard. Like yeah, they, they have did awesome that. weapons. I, I sorry, I just remembered. Yang did that to uh, Raven's camp. Yeah, that was a great example of that. But even in that, in in even in that situation, you're like, oh, these guys are gonna try and beat her up or something. This should be. Well, that was that was my point. It's more yeah. of the volume one and two stuff. Oh, uh, right. But I would I would love to see that in cases where you're not entirely sure. Like, like and still see, have a beat down. and still have and still have the good guys basically be like show off their chops. You, you know what would be a, a, a good one for that? You know, what would be a, a good one for that. Blake versus Ilya, Oscar. <sighs> but yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I I, I I know he's a new character, and it'd be better to see it with some team Ruby or team Junior yeah. kind of characters. But but yeah, yeah. rule of cool. Having him go Avatar State with uh-huh. Ozpin and just they, they, destroy yeah. someone. Like, I'm trying to think who would be best, but I'm thinking, like, Watts? Mercury. Maybe? Uh, no. <laughs> who would be scared of you? I, I love that little throwaway oh, yeah. line of no. just being like, and he's like, you should talk to... She's like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, he was like, I helped defeat a maiden. Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. even though it's like, come on, you know that it was really like, yeah, It was really like, well, Emerald and me that did yeah, most yeah. of the work. Like, you were a, you were exactly. a nice blunt you, 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 were, you were a distraction. You, know. <laughs> you, you, you were an adequate meat shield and yep. no one can take that away from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. But, oh my gosh. So, uh, with this volume, mm-hmm. we are moving into the uh, similar setup of a kind of a fusion between volume three and four. Right. Where we have all the plots now moving simultaneously pretty quickly towards a big towards climactic, a big battle. climactic battle yeah and then the volume three bit where there's going to be a big climactic battle yeah at some point do you think we are done with quiet character moments as of this point at this point i hope so because i feel like we've okay. at, for this volume because okay. i feel like we've gotten a lot of them they've not even after good. the battle um maybe maybe like a couple okay. but but they've 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 covered that and okay. now they've and they've been building up this fight enough that now I want to start getting into the tension and the and I, I sure. want to be like like uh, like you want to be like, out, like pulling your hair out yeah wondering what's going to happen next right um, uh, I think we're yeah. basically there I think, I think this so next too. episode will have one more soft character moment sure I think we might have some after everything is over yeah. and done but yeah I think I think we're basically through it all. Mm-hmm. All right, so this is a long, fun theory-based discussion. Not a lot discussion of the actual episode. I feel like uh, this was more of a setup episode. I think no, I know. I think that it was a capitulation episode for the Raven bit, and we now have uh, a very yes. serious track we're running on towards the finale, <laughs> yes. and that makes it not exactly a setup episode, right. but it's 
it is it it very much built up the fight that's going to happen, even though that's right. not that all that the episode was about. Right, um, because we now have a huge change in right. action al- yep. alignments and motivations and, and stuff. Yeah, because like here's here's the thing: you don't need to have a fight to have conflict. Yes, like you, yes, like, the, like Ruby that, that is whole, getting that finally. It, yeah, it's so good <laughs> because like that that whole volume discussion, four had that with Weiss actually it quite did. a bit. It yeah. did, and that that was that, that was. Pretty Probably like one of my favorite aspects of it, other than yeah. of course Renora, because <laughs> that becoming canon was just about the best thing ever. Sure. Um, okay, so with this, we're excited for the next episode. Yes. The next episode is going to be a lot of mini things going at once, but I think it might focus a lot on the, the menagerie. menagerie bit. Yeah, I think um, so. They've they've had yeah. they've they've had enough points where they're talking about like okay, this fight's happening, like right. everything's going down. So now they need to. Now they need to actually have it, like, end. Actually, yeah. Yeah. All right, so that'll be fun. So if yeah. you guys want to see us in that video, uh, yeah, just stick around for the next one. Yep. <laughs> Basically. All right, guys, we'll see you all later. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time.